Perfect. So you you um did you guys see the recording icon? Yes. Yes, then you can start. Thank you. Okay, so welcome once again. So I will uh, try to do a quick presentation of the supercomputer named Berzelius that has been installed this year uh, in Sweden in the Linköping uh, University. So, um, sorry. So as you can see, this is a quite impressive uh, supercomputer. This is something that is uh, in uh, You've got uh, 15 racks of uh, DGX machines, so for a total of uh, uh, 60 DGX that are connected together. And as you can see, you've got some small racks in the middle that is only for service and for storage and also for the uh, uh, computation and the, the network uh, around these uh, DGX. So this is what we call a, a super pod. This is based on the NVIDIA uh, architecture. So what is this super pod? So first, uh, a few numbers. Uh, this is the fastest supercomputer in Sweden. So you've got uh, 300 petaflops AI. So this is quite impressive. And as you see in this picture, this is a, a very, very impressive installation with a lot of cable on that because of course, all these uh, DGX are connected together. Um, this is also um, a computer that is in the top 10 European supercomputer. So this is also an impressive machine, not only for AI, but also for uh, what we have in HPC, uh, like we say, uh, in HPL. Um, and also this is in the top 20 of all the NVIDIA accelerated system worldwide. So this is also something that is that we can be proud of this. Uh, this is a, a very uh, interesting installation. So at the end, this is the number 89 and the top 500 worldwide that we have uh, regularly. So there is a, uh, each uh, two times a, a year, there is a, a ranking that is on, on the full um, worldwide uh, HPC supercomputer. So what is the configuration of this uh, supercomputer? This is, as I said, 60 DGX A100 uh, with 40 gig uh, HPM memories. And all these computers are connected together. So to be able to, to reach those kind of performance, we will have also uh, two fabrics, two different fabrics that connect uh, uh, the the GPU together. So you've got uh, the full in and blocking fabric, which is uh, for the compute part. Each DGX is able to communicate to another DGX. And most of this, uh, there is also each GPU that is able to communicate with another GPU and another DGX without, without going through the CPU. So you can use the GPU direct uh, communication on these compute fabrics. You've got also another fabric that is totally uh, dissociated uh, from the compute fabric, which is the storage fabric. This is to access the storage. So when you are doing some IO activity, you won't have any, uh, uh, any problems on your uh, compute communication. You've got also a fast parallel st shared storage, which is done by uh, DDN. So DDN is providing for uh, AI 400X, that is a, a specific appliance for Luster. This is a shared parallel storage. Each DGX has access to this storage and each uh, um, also each login node and management node has access to this storage. So everything is based on InfiniBand and you will have those uh, kind of network that it will be used. I will show you it uh, later. So as you may know, uh, the main part uh, of this uh, super prod is, uh, of course, uh, the DGX A100 uh, supercomputer. So here you've got uh, eight NVIDIA, uh, oh, there is a mistake, sorry, this is not a 80 gigabyte server, but a 40 gigabyte server. Um, so next up right will be maybe the, the, 90, the 80 gigabyte server. So each DGX will have eight uh, NVIDIA uh, GPU. So each with 40 gig of, of memory. 
and each uh, GPU is also linked uh, into the box uh, through the NVLink to have a 600 gigabyte per second GPU to GPU bidirectional bandwidth. So very, very quick communication between GPU inside the box. Uh, you've got uh, uh, those, uh, uh, also those uh, NV switch, uh, NVIDIA, so six NV switch that's inside the box to, to have uh, the communication that is done between the GPUs. Uh, you've got uh, two fabrics. So for these fabrics, you will have eight Melanox Connectix 6, so 200 gigabyte bit per second. So this one is dedicated to the compute fabrics. And you've got another one, which is a dual part one that will be uh, used uh, to connect to the storage interface. Of course, you've got also a host, not only GPUs and those boxes, and even the host is uh, quite impressive because you've got uh, two CPUs, uh, AMD ROM, 7742. So this is a 64 cores based that it will be used. Uh, and also you've got uh, one terabyte of memory inside these uh, uh, boxes. And last, uh, you've got some local storage that is uh, dedicated to the uh, to the box so that you can use uh, on cache on to use locally if you don't want to use the shared storage. And on this storage, you've got a 15 terabyte of uh, NVMe SSD, and also uh, a few disks for the for the OS for the operating system. So back to um, the network. So as I said, we we want to have also a great communication between the GPUs. So for that, we built uh, this kind of fabrics, the infinite fabrics, using the NVIDIA QM uh, 90. 87, sorry, uh, so, uh, HDR switches. So for this, uh, you've got those kind of communication. So here you have at this, uh, in the middle, uh, the few DGX, each one has eight connection and all this connection is going to what I call here a subgroup, which is eight L1. And so you can connect together 20 DGX together to the same level. So here you've got the connection and this is uh, what we call is a super pod architecture, what we call a, a scalable unit. So uh, Berzelius is made of three scalable units to reach the 60 DGX. And all these DGX can communicate through the infinite band, through the L1 level. And if they want to go to another scalable unit, of course, they can go to the L2 level. There is 20 switches on this that allow you to connect together all the 60 digits together. On the other side, you've got the storage fabrics where you have the different access, same thing. You've got a fat tree, which is fully non-blocking that allow everyone to communicate to the storage part. So here you've got the storage, but you've got also the login nodes that are going to there. So here you've got the full access for the HDR to connect to the storage part. The storage part is made of uh, three, four, sorry, four appliance AI400X. So those appliances are totally autonomous and they provide each of these, um, the performance of uh, 80, sorry, uh, 48 gigabyte per second and 32 gigabyte per second in write and 3 million IOPS. So those performance can be uh, multiplied because as it is uh, totally autonomous, uh, it will be able to give you access to what we call a, a luster file system. So uh, this file, well, uh, luster file system provide you this shared access. So we put uh, an Berzelius uh, for them to reach uh, this kind of performance when done 92 gigabyte per second and 128 gigabyte per second in read and write performance. Total capacity is around 1.4.4 uh, petabyte uh, globally. So this is uh, how it runs. In fact, uh, you've got uh, each, so ES is same as AI, only uh, a few change. So on this uh, appliance, you've got two controllers that will 
host a, a few CPUs, as you say on the previous slide, it was uh, Skylake. And on these uh, um, controllers, we are running a virtual machine that acts as a um, metadata server and also as a, a object storage server that allow to, to use each of the uh, disk on the, and to respond to uh, connection from the DGX as a, a shared storage. So when you are running and writing to a file, you are asking each of the VOSS to put part of the file on the disk. So this is totally parallelism IO. So this is how you can reach those kind of performance. And this is very easy to scale. You only need to add additional uh, appliance that will run inside this cluster. So this is it for the hardware part of the of the solution. Now I will let uh, Dai uh, explain uh, a little bit how to use the, the software um, on the software point of view. Sure. Right. Uh, I, I can also just, uh, I can, um, okay, so thank you. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is this is um, the software that is installed on on, on Bezidius, uh for resource management. It's called Slurm. Slurm is a very popular uh, resource manager. It's, uh, you, you can see the full name on the subtitle. Um, on, it is important to know that on Slurm there's two type of nodes. Once you log in, the first type is called login node. Um, which is uh, the one that you will get immediate access as uh, as long as you log in into the system, uh, which is the, you, you can SSH into. I think it's mentioned before, and um, but those nodes are usually not the nodes that are going to be used for running your job. So you can imagine that is the starting point. You can you it usually doesn't have a GPU. Um, it is uh, where you can basically build your script and uh, configure everything and send it uh, off into the queue. And there's a job queue. And uh, the job queue basically queues up your requests for the, uh, running something in the queue and uh, send it to the dispatcher. Once um, the dispatcher will notice if there's any free resource that is usable by you and um, here, uh, the, the, the picture is taking somewhere else, but on, the, on, on this system is called Brazilius uh, whatever. Uh, as you can see in the middle, this is the, uh, this is the name. Um, so it will be, it will select some of those nodes and dispatch the, the job onto those uh, systems. Next slide, please. So basic usage of Slurm is shown here. Uh, you can use a command called srun. Uh, that srun command um, has uh, different options. Uh, I have listed here. Um, in this in today's task, you will find all of this part configured for you already. Uh, so uh, see, uh, uh, Zenodia has a script that has uh, that has already configured everything here, and it's um, marked as please do not change. But I think it's important for you also to understand what is in the script. As you can see, you can hear. Uh, you can select a number of nodes uh, that you want to run. You can select a number of tasks, parallel tasks to uh, to run, um, as well as things like how many tasks per node, how many GPUs, how many GPUs per task, um, and, and, and things like that. Once you run them, you will see that uh, multiple output will come out uh, usually. So um, on, the, on the command line here, I'm selecting two tasks, and you can see that there is uh, uh, this task are launched on two different nodes, and uh, one is on the Luna 1 and the other is on Luna 2. And on the left hand side, because I'm using the minus L command, you can see the number that, of the output of the specific task. Next slide, please. Um, once your job is pushed on the queue, you can also uh, run something uh, called SQ. Uh, the SQ command will show your current uh, job status. And, um, or, or the job status of everyone actually from your partition uh, that will uh, that is possible so that is currently running. Uh, you see in the middle the running state. Uh, I don't know where it is switching. Uh, can you go back? Thank you. Uh, you can you see in the middle this the the running and um, uh, other other things uh, that is uh, shown there. There's also the possibility to show the job um, on. The, 
uh, on a more detailed view or cancel a job using the X control show job job ID. The job ID is the one that you see in the SQ or as cancel, which uh, cancels the job. I'm not sure if it's true for the 12 hours on this system, but uh, there's usually some time, something like a job time. Um, it's dependent on your administrator, but um, I, I think you will find it out later. Uh, okay. I can comment on that. Uh, basically, if I understand it correctly, the default running job time is three hours. Three hours, you see. That's, that's confirmed, that's, that's different. So three hours is the maximum job time. Okay, this is uh, okay. That's the next slide was okay. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, Slurm was a system that is built for HPC. HPC programs are usually not uh, multi, uh, are usually not built into a container. Um, but as you know, in the deep learning space, we have usually container based systems. So NVIDIA has developed a tool. Uh, you can see I took the slide from Cambridge One, but it's uh, basically the same thing here. I, uh, I checked. Uh, we developed a tool. It's called, um, um, it's called uh, Enroot and Pixis that will add this container uh, realization, um, a container realization thing into Slurm. On the right hand side, you can see, you can here specify a container image that is coming from Docker Hub by specifying minus minus container minus image equals uh, CentOS 7. Um, and now you can go in and uh, this, this will run in the container. We do not allow to uh, run Docker. The reason is uh, basically Docker is, um, is insecure and in, in a multi user environment. Uh, people who can run Docker usually can trivially uh, become root. So that's why uh, we do not allow that. Next slide, please. Uh, here's more examples. If you run, I want to run something else. Uh, if you want to run other stuff, you can uh, specify, you can start a container by importing an image from NGC. Note here, if you specify mvcr.io slash nvidia slash PyTorch, whatever, um, those the image will be automatically imported. And if you give it a name, minus minus container name equals PyTorch, that name becomes local to this, uh, uh, becomes local to, uh, to you for a time. And that name is being cached. Uh, so if the next time you use the same name, the, the same image is being pulled. Um, we can also reuse. Uh, we can also reuse the existing uh, container uh, by just uh, using that name as mentioned. Um, and you can, of course, also start uh, an interactive session uh, that is going that is all uh, directly out of the container uh, by specifying minus minus PTY and then run bash. Um, yeah. Uh, so you can see the last command results in the shell that is uh, that is there. The next slide, please. So what you will find in today's uh, task is uh, not as run or as run that is basically embedded into a script. Um, the reason for that is sometimes you want to prepare, pre-prepare a lot of uh, different um, a pre a step. So basically you want to uh, build up um, a, a type of a, a row of environment variables, calculate some configurations, um, which is the case usually for NLP, a lot NLP workloads, because it depends on how many GPUs you have, how many nodes you have. So what you can do is you can put everything of that into a script, um, basically a batch script, as you, uh, as you can see here and um, put um, everything into this uh, the script in the, uh, that you need and run the S run uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the script. On this um, this is an example how to run a basic ResNet 50 training. Uh, I, I, <laughs> maybe my slide is a little bit uh, strange today, but uh, uh, thank you uh, <laughs> Bruno to switch back. Um, yeah, so this, this will launch the job. And uh, as you can see, you can also override those commands. So I'm specifying in the S batch uh, two nodes here, um, but you can also specify with the S batch command one node to override the two node configuration later um, when you submit the script. There is a, the major difference between the S batch and S run command is S run command will block your terminal until it terminates. So it's best if you have 
uh, multiple terminals or things like Tmax to um, prevent the terminal from uh, from being being blocked all the time if you're using the srun command. For the sbatch command, it does not block your terminal. Um, it will uh, return immediately. It's an asynchronous execution. It will wait. Uh, it will put everything uh, into a, a log file. Uh, that's actually fine to switch to the next one. Thank you. Um, to run a multi-node, I'm taking again for the S run example because it's more intuitive here. To run on multi-node, there are also different options uh, besides the part that you can specify the, the tenant name um, or the, the uh, partition name um, and the, the GPU uh, number of GPUs with the minus plot G, number of nodes and so on. You can also see a function that is called M, uh, minus minus MPI uh, equals none. So MPI is something that uh, that is basic to all supercomputers. Uh, it's the the de facto standard to run multi-node jobs or multi-pro uh, multi-process uh, jobs, basically um, that can co uh, cooperate with each other. So uh, if you think about things like Horowat, that is implemented basically based on MPI. So in order to run Horowat job by uh, for instance with TensorFlow. Uh, you will need to specify minus and minus MPI equals to PMIX, uh, which is a launch behavior. PMIX is a launch behavior um, of uh, or a launch mechanism of MPI. If you are running PyTorch job, uh, which are not based on MPI, which are based on environment variables and setting up those uh, with the environment variables, uh, you would not need to specify MPI, so you can use minus minus MPI equals none, which is the case in the uh, NLP training today. Okay, next slide, please. Um, another tip is uh, please do use the uh, minus L if you want to run anything that is um, larger than a single node or something like that. Uh, otherwise, uh, your your as you can see, every single node will print out its uh, uh, its print uh, it, it, its uh, standard out here with S run or later with S batch is the same thing. It will print out the um, the the uh, the standard out, and you can just no longer read them. What you can also see in this script is you can mount directories using the container mount um, option. Uh, that is, uh, I, I haven't touched this part, but uh, this is the the equivalent of the minus v in the Docker environment. Uh, that will be able uh, that will allow you to mount certain directories into the container. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, I, I want to go one step back. Uh, this is a very advanced topic, um, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm not sure in, if you are touching this in today's or in the next three days uh, training, because we have built the training script most of the part for you already. Uh, but uh, I feel it's very important, as Bruno has in, uh, introduced uh, uh, the topology and the network before, and I do want to give you a more deep view in the architecture of the system. So the DJX A180 GB or the 40 GB is the same, it doesn't matter here, um, is, uh, looks like this. This is what we call architecture block diagram. As you can see, there are two CPUs which are connected to this uh, purple, uh, purple uh, colored uh, thing, which is called PCI Express switch. So, and on that PCI Express switch, um, you have on, on each of those switch, you have two, uh, NICs, which were, which is uh, on the left and right hand side, it's a um, network interface card and two of the A100 GPUs, which are on the bottom, as you can see. Um, and as you can see, uh, they are connected only to the switch and then via a single link to the CPU, which means they can guest on this one single link when they communicate with the CPU and with anything that comes from the CPU. Um, this is this is important to know um, because uh, that means you will have a limited bandwidth uh, to the CPU if all of the GPUs is uh, communicating with the CPU at the same time. Uh, this is the first thing, and the second thing is uh, it will not have uh, any congestion if those GPUs are communicating with the network interface directly without flowing through the GPU. 
and it will also not involve the CPU for the communication because of the, this PCI Express switch. This means we can uh, intelligently select each of the AY100 card uh, to map with uh, each uh, one of the network interface. Uh, for example, you can take the uh, NIC0 and map it with the, uh, the first GPU on the uh, left corner here. Um, so that those two can communicate directly with each other uh, within the GPU and with outside work because the network interface goes into this InfiniBand topology and whatever uh, is behind the InfiniBand. So that is very important to remember. Um, so communicating through the GPU directly with the NIC. There's another thing to remember is that we have this uh, NV switch, the NVIDIA uh, switch for the NVLink in the uh, bottom, uh, in the middle, of, uh, what is shown here, that can handle the communication between those GPUs within a single node. So they also do not flow uh, be, uh, through the GPU, uh, the CPU. This is very important because again, if you lack communication flow through the CPU, it will uh, cause you a lot of overhead and congestion and things like that. We do not want that to happen um, because we're training large scale model. Next slide, please. So what is even worse is um, what you can see on the, on, the, uh, on the CPU is there are four uh, numbers. Those are uh, one, uh, zero, one, two, three. And why are there four numbers? Because this AMD processor uh, is very, very new and it has uh, four different chips. Uh, actually, it has eight different chips on, the, uh, on each, single of, uh, each single CPU. Uh, that means uh, the communication within that CPU is also not, um, uh, also not uh, uniform, what we call it's a non-uniform memory access. But it's, uh, Basically means that if you are running a thread um, uh, on the on the uh, on the CPU uh, on the CPU zero part and and uh, that thread wants to run a uh, core something in the uh, GPU that is connected to one, uh, it will has to go through the CPU one first and then go through the PCI Express and and then go to the GPU. That's uh, that's additional uh, uh, even more additional steps and it's causing even more. Um, overhead. So we want to avoid that. Uh, one slide forward, please. To do that, how to do that? It's uh, actually simple, thanks to uh, the researchers in the HPC field. They have programmed a cool uh, tool um, uh, called NUMA Control. And uh, the NUMA Control tool uh, if you run it, it will bind, uh, it, you, will, you will be able to specify a process that is starting on the CPU where to uh, where it should be placed. And as you can see here, uh, if you want to place, um, if you want to run on the GPU 0, 1, 2, 3, you want to place them to the first um, CPU, which is 0 to 3, and then the memory space that are con correlating to that CPU. Um, the same applies for the GPU 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, but as I've mentioned, that's even not enough. You can uh, you want to place them to the exact CPU die, so the the chip that is on the CPU um, uh, itself, and as you can see, that can be obtained by the way using NVIDIA SMI Topo minus M. That works also outside of the uh, that works also on your computer. Right? It will also show you this stuff. Um, so that is basically what you can or what you can do, and you can uh, bind it directly to one of those. Uh, you can you can try it out whether this affects your uh, your performance and you can keep the best for the two bindings. For today's for this challenge, um, we did this uh, for you already, or we, uh, we we are not focusing too much in the performance engineering. It's not uh, it's not the main topic, but this is important for your training later, especially if you go really large scale to train things like GPT three. You will really need this. Uh, without those, uh, your, your training will not scale um, at all. Your training will not scale likely beyond anything that is larger than a, a single, uh, uh, that is larger than a single uh, SU. Uh, can you click, please? Is there anything else? Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, so I'm on point, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, thank you very much.